Hello, hello, hello. My name is Falafel, and can you believe that this isn't a Legend of Zelda themed tutorial? We're building Captain's armor from Fire Emblem Three Houses, focusing on detailing armor designs with cool techniques and war blood. So let's get into it. Now you've seen me make chest plates on my channel before, but Catherine's armor is unique in that it's full coverage front to back. In the spirit of keeping all your patterns, I use the front and boob cut patterns from Lionel, and I'll link that above in the corner. And after creating my own bodice block based off of my measurements, which you can follow this full bodice block tutorial I'm linking in the bio, it's really great. I use the back and side pieces of the bodice block and I eyeballed a pattern for where the shoulder straps would go. So the breastplate actually connects to the sides instead of in the back like past tutorials. Catherine's gauntlet is a unique shape too with a bulbous upper arm and a tapered wrist. So here's a mini falafel bullshit pattern you can apply to your gauntlets. You start by drawing your wrist end of the gauntlet, which is approximately half the circumference of your wrist, and then the length of your forearm, or however large you actually want your gauntlet to be, is drawn down the center. Your forearm end will be roughly half the circumference of your upper forearm, and because of its unique taper, your center line will actually start at a concave curve and form into an outward curve, kind of like an S shape. And that way the forearm end has this little hump compared to the now sloped wrist. So the gauntlet will kind of look like this from the side view. I'm all about foam conservation. I'll talk about this more in part two of my Catherine series where I'm making her sword. But when I draft the patterns onto this 1 4th inch EVA foam provided by Cosplay Supplies, thank you so much, I try to fit each piece as closely as possible. That way I can get the absolute most out of my foam sheet. Also make sure you label everything. Oh my gosh, you don't want to get this part confused. It makes, it makes the world of a difference. I then cut the foam into smaller sections so that it's a bit easier to work with when I'm cutting out each individual piece. I'm using a number two exacto blade I cut the pieces out of the foam. After every eighth cut or so, I sharpen the blade so that the cuts are super clean. And there it is. And you, then you have a little mini mountain of scraps that you can use for detailing and armoring and stuffing into a pillow. Contact the men. EVA Foam's best friend. I apply a generous amount to the edges that are to be adhered. And then I wait about 15 to 20 minutes until it gets all tacky, then stick them together. Here's just a quick look at how I cut a 45 degree angle into some of the foam pieces to make beveled edges. If you hate sanding like I do, but want to add a little touch of detailing or remove harsh, bluntly cut edges, uh, beveled edges are everything. I find them to also be super helpful when you have pieces that are going to curve together, like the actual boob cup. Using a beveled edge when you glue them together helps to reduce the seam. The top chest piece of Catherine's armor has this gorgeous fold in it. So one of my favorite ways to achieve this kind of shape is to slice the foam at a 45 degree angle without completely cutting through. So you're only cutting about halfway. Then you turn the piece around and then cut closely another 45 degree angle slice. You pull out this little sliver of foam, fill the groove with hot glue. Watch, uh, this is out of frame. Congratulations, full waffle. And then wait until it dries. It looks like I'm sniffing it. I'm just blowing into it, oh my God. <laughs> um, that way you get this fold without any seams. Now again, I hate sanding. I hate it, I hate it with a passion. But when dremeling seams out of armor, I use the Dremel at the lowest possible setting. Uh, it takes a little bit longer, but I like to really take my time sanding out the seam lines of the armor to make all the pieces as smooth as possible, like the top of Caillou's head. So I was recently able to visit England for the first time, and one of the stops that I took there was at the Tower of London. I was so inspired by the armor section that they had. While Catherine's armor design is really cool, it's also a bit tame and not as decorated or embellished as some of these pieces that I saw in this museum. I'll put some pictures like this. Beautiful. And so um, I drew with pen a little filigree design similar to the ones that I saw in the Tower of London, um, as well as some fire emblem motifs. I lightly carved into them with an X-Acto blade and then heated the foam so the small cuts would expand. 
And this is a really easy way to amp up your armor design if you want to make it a bit more fancy, right? Look. You got little kneecaps. You little kneecaps are all fancy now. Okay. Do you not want to spend a lot of money on leather? Yeah, yes. Yes, I don't want to spend money. Yeah. You take EVA foam, you heat it with a heat gun, and then take a balled up piece of aluminum foil and press it into the foam while it's still hot. It'll leave this wrinkly leather like texture. Yes. Yes, savings. And for rivets, I just glued little googly eyes to the foam. And see, these are like more touches that you can use to really bring your foam armor to life. All right, so let me tell you a little bit more about Warbla. This thermoplastic, which is all for our health and supplies, thank you so much, becomes malleable when it's heated. So you can use it to add even more design and flair to the armor. So I'm tracing out a pattern on a piece of Warbla with pen. I'm gonna cut it out. And then once I cut it out, I'm adding it to the top of Catherine's breastplate. After heating again, I'm using a pen to carve the emblem into the warbler. Black warbler is pretty great too because it's adhesive on its own, so it's sticking right onto the foam base, no problem at all. You can also mold and shape warbler into cool designs. So like here, I'm rolling it up and twisting it into these little ba bra uh, bra uh, these little braids. Uh, twisting it into these little braids to wind the pauldrons and breastplate uh, titties. I also did it for that. Um, you can even fold it together to make a thicker piece of Warbla and add other elements like fake strapping, which I just use a pen to carve in the details. So onto painting. If you've seen my last videos, you'll see that I usually prime all of my armor pieces with Plasti Dip. And for silver armor, I usually use Rust-Oleum's Advanced Silver Spray Paint. But detailing, I can't stress this enough, I live for folk art and apple barrel paints. I think that these two paints are incredible. I use them for any kind of detailing. You've probably seen this trick before again too that I use, but I use fabric markers to draw in all the shadows and, and fine lines and I buff them out with my finger or napkin. I think this is a nice alternative to airbrushing if you don't have an airbrush. This kind of shading really makes a difference in your pieces. It really adds a dimension that I think is just really beautiful looking. Oh my God. For leather, I use the base coat of Apple Barrel's Coffee Bean. And then I take this stipple brush, it's a harder, uh, more textured paintbrush, and I lightly dab on a lighter tan color so it looks like worn leather. I mean the trickery, the buffoonery. And with that, here's Catherine, one of my favorite badasses of Fire Emblem. You can use these techniques to really make the most out of your armor builds, as well as any foam or warbler projects that you're working on. So thank you so much for watching. You can follow me on all of my socials at Falafa Cosplays on Instagram and Facebook. Falafa Cosplay on Twitter because still don't got that S. Uh, I don't know when it's coming. Big thanks to Cosplay Supply for providing all of the foam and warbler used in this tutorial. And in the next video, I'll be making Catherine's sword. Again, covering foam conservation, warbler techniques, and cool paint things. So thanks so much for watching again. Okay, bye.